During the 1950s, many post-war changes took place at Wrights, reflecting the change going on in the world. From the additions that would drastically change the school to the sports triumphs and drama productions, there were many interesting things occurring. It would be a decade to remember. As the world around Wrights changed and grew, the high school followed suit. By the beginning of the 1950s, Cold War tensions were in full swing, with the Soviets having developed an atomic bomb, a war in Korea breaking out, and the threat of nuclear war looming. These tensions were felt not only in everyday life, but also at school, especially with the precautions and drills starting to be conducted regularly. A visible example at Wright's was the fallout shelter sign in the main hallway. While there was some social unrest and labor strife, Overall, Americans were experiencing a time of financial prosperity. This success was felt throughout the expansion of the economy and the city in general. The tend towards suburbanization with the desire for an idyllic family life prompted many families to move to subdivisions like Western Terrace off Upper Mount Vernon Avenue. After 1945, the baby boomer generation had begun. The increase in area residents greatly impacted the Evansville school system. Growing enrollments led to the creation of North High School designed to relieve overcrowding at the other Evansville high schools. It was anticipated that even with the construction of North, Wrights would need more space. The first phase of the Wrights expansion, which began in May 1957, were the additions of the nurse's suite, counselor's office, home economics, band, and choir rooms, along with the expansion of the media center. After this came the creation of a bigger gym for rights, as well as a three-story wing of classrooms. Unfortunately, these changes would come at the cost of covering up the original facade of the school. Many were already upset that the original appearance of the building had been changed, but despite this, on May 13, 1957, a bulldozer swept away the front stairs of the building as some onlookers watched with sadness. By January 1958, the framing of the new wing was put into place and the original front of the building was covered up. Construction on this would last until December 1958. The total cost of the addition was approximately $1 million. Updates and expansions were also made to the 1927 edition of the school. Some of these updates and expansions included the renovation of the classrooms in the old building and the expansion of the auditorium, which began in 1960 after plans were finalized in December 1957. During that time, the old cafeteria, located below the small gym, was also expanded so that more seating space could be offered to serve the students. The building was not the only thing to undergo changes, however. During the 1951-52 school year, a new lighting system was installed in the bowl. The lighting system was dedicated November 1, 1951, at the game against Memorial High School. In 1958, funding for a new sound system and scoreboard was approved for rights, and those enhancements were installed in time for the fall football season. The new scoreboard cost $2,300 and was paid for by the Westside Nut Club. Wrights had many important triumphs in sports during the 1950s. The football team experienced great success in that decade, winning a state championship three different times in 1953, 56, and 57. The team was undefeated in every game of those three years under coach Herman Byers, an impressive feat not duplicated since. Basketball also had some great moments in the 1950s. The team went to state in 1951, losing to Muncie Central by two points after a controversial turnover in the closing seconds of the game. In 1955's, Riggs led the team to semi-state as well before retiring after the season. The golf team also made its mark at the state tournament, finishing as state runner-up in 1950. In addition to high school games, Wrights would host Evansville College games until they got their own stadium. The bowl also played host to Evansville's own bowl game, the Refrigerator Bowl. First held in 1948, the Refrigerator Bowl brought different college teams to town. In the 1950s, the Wrights band remained under the leadership of Harry Hart, Hart, who had come to Wrights in 1945, led the instrumental music department through the decade. 
During the 1950s, the band performed a different routine every week at football games. In the 50s, the Wrights Choir was under the direction of Mr. Gilbert Weehy. During this time, his choir performed annual Christmas and spring concerts. Along with the annual concerts, the concert choir and ensemble choir formed during Weehy's tenure also performed at banquets, churches, elementary schools, and at venues around the city like the Coliseum. As well as directing the choir, Weehy was also involved in many theater programs and helped with their musical productions. Throughout the 1950s, the Wright's Thespian Troupe and theater produced numerous shows. These included many popular productions, such as Meet Me in St. Louis, as well as lesser known ones like Ghost Road. But perhaps one of the most interesting productions was performed in 1951. In the spring of that year, Wright seniors put together their senior production. This one was different. Having been written and directed by Wright senior John Jennings, with the help of fellow senior Sarah Seiler. The production was named Strike It Rich, in which a young oil tycoon falls in love with the farmer's daughter. The musical and its 31-member cast and full orchestra opened on Thursday, May 3, 1951. The reviewer described Jennings as, quote, the budding Oscar Hammerstein, end quote, saying, quote, the musical proved that Jennings ought to strike it rich himself in show business someday, end quote. This prediction seemed to prove true as John Jennings became a renowned director on Broadway. Many notable people came from the 1950s era of rights. One such person was Jerry Marvel. He was a star player on the 1951 basketball team, graduated in 1952, and went on to become a POW and war hero in Vietnam. Another notable person to come from the era was Don Henry, who graduated in 1951 as a football and basketball star, went on to play in college, and eventually came back to Wrights in the 1960s. He was a well-known faculty member at Wrights for 30 years, serving as assistant football coach and physical education teacher. Perhaps two of the most recognizable figures of the 1950s era were Principal Neil Pierce and Coach Herman Byers. Principal Pierce came to Wrights in 1930 and stayed for nearly 40 years. He started out as a history teacher and moved up to assistant principal in 1934. Thirteen years later, in 1947, he became principal and led Wrights through all of the mid-century renovations that would drastically change the school at the height of the school's population. Pierce was known to be a disciplinarian and ruled the school with tight restrictions, but was still well respected by students and faculty alike. He would leave after 41 years at Wrights in 1971. Coach Herman Byers would be defined as the coach that helped bring Wrights to historic football greatness with undefeated teams in the 1950s and 60s. He became legendary in Wrights history as the coach who helped truly invigorate Wrights' football passion and tradition. He coached at Wrights from 1942 until 1968. In his 36-year career, he compiled a record of 189 wins, 51 losses, and 15 ties. The Wrights football field in the bowl would eventually be dedicated in his honor. Wrights went through one rather significant faculty change during the 1950s. Miss Viola Eblen, the first and only dean of girls that Wrights High School ever had up to that point, retired in 1959. She had been at Wrights since its early days, arriving in the 1921-22 school year. She had originally taught Latin for six years until the position of Dean of Girls was created for the 1927-28 school year. She dedicated her whole 38-year career to serving rights. Although rights went through many changes throughout the decade of the 1950s, the traditions and legacy of the house on the hill only grew and became more profound. This decade, more significantly than others, changed F.J. Wright's high school, leaving it with a completely different look and feel from that of past generations. It was the decade that helped Wright's begin its transformation into the respected, modern learning institution we know today. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.